What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the Pilgrim's Purge Guide. It's going to be a long one, but we've got everything covered inside of this one and we've got way too much to cover on this one. So we're jumping straight into it. First starting off, just coming from the uh, Sky Rest Bridge, we'll be heading on down talking to some pompous guy that could later on be a potential bad guy that we may face off with, but I'm not sure. He just seems like he wants that lamp pretty bad. But down from him, we'll find a new spear. Could be beneficial for some people, but honestly, it's one of those early game ones. And we'll also be talking to a strange looking man that eventually gives us a stick after conversing with him. But from that point, we'll be able to drop down on some rooftops and then find our way onto some walking paths. Bunch of destructible uh, items out here. We're going to be breaking through all these barrels. And do keep in mind, there's going to be more than a few spots where they are going to be hidden enemies behind a lot of these destroyable objects. They're going to be hidden in more than a few spots. And some of them, even more so, are just ready to push you straight over the edge. We've got a lot of verticality with this location, and uh, it's pretty easy to get thrown down. And also, one thing to keep in mind is the fact that anytime that you're opening up that lamp, you are prone to being attacked from any one of those enemies in the umbral that can bring you off into the umbral. So keep that in mind anytime that you're using it. Try to keep your head on a swivel. Look around, making it brief with the use of those lamps. That way you don't have or you have less opportunities for those enemies to bring you back into the umbral. The worst part about being brought into the umbral is those moments when you don't have one of those shrunken heads or you're not near one of the vistage points. As not only is it going to be one of those moments where you've lost your capability of having a second life, but it pretty much doubles the enemy amount you'll be facing going forward. Just makes things a whole lot more frustrating, and trust me, if you face off with some of those Reapers a couple of times, they're just going to make any fight ten times harder, because they're just agile, constantly moving around, and even those husks can be absolutely devastating and horribly frustrating when they're in large packs. But that being said, this next zone we've got right here, you obviously see we've got another one of those ranged enemy types up above. I was still early on in the game. Kind of still new to the fact that I've got that ranged capability. You know, Elden Ring, Liza P, I never really utilized those ranged capabilities inside of those games. So I'm thinking I'm going to be able to push forward, but eventually ended up reminding myself that not only do I have a throwable, but for whatever reason, I'm throwing a rock instead. So I got frustrated, threw the lamp on, you know, tossed him over the edge and gave him the old one, two. And now we're finally able to move across here. Moving forward, we're going to cross the top of this section over here and all the way at the other end, we're actually going to be grabbing up a fist weapon. I mean, just looking at it, it seems like one that's going to cause some bleed damage, but effectively it doesn't. All about agility with that weapon could be good for like a dual wielding type of situation. If you've got two fist weapons, could be uh, pretty powerful in my opinion, or effectively early game should be pretty powerful. Now, obviously you'll notice that, uh, a lot of times I'd, I'd like to use the lamp to just walk across things instead of going into the umbral, but in this case we're going to need to go into the umbral at this section up here. I have found that I, I distinctly hate facing off with these moth, um, I don't even know what to call this thing, man. It, it is absolutely frustrating, but any time that I've killed them as we progress forward, generally they do drop good loot, and later on some of them will even drop uh, the vestige keys or vestids, bleh, vestige seeds, goodness, that dyslexia coming through. But generally, I would say that it's a good idea to actually put those moths in their place and get that good, lead, bleh, good loot out of them. But we'll also be getting the pale eye shield from the stomach of that creature hanging on the wall just over there that we soul flayed. Uh, strangely enough, bursting the stomachs of... Uh, it's a strange one, honestly. Every time I see it, I still just want the loot, but it's weird every time I pop it. Just reminds me of that scene from Saw where they just cut into his stomach for a key. You know what? Kind of reminds me more of Alien. Maybe that's the problem. But going off into the sanctuary, we will find our next vestige point, as well as that little umbral rift. Now, I'd highly suggest... Activating each one of those umbral rifts anytime that you see one of those characters in blue just kind of standing there as a little memory. Not only is it good to, you know, basically get a piece of the story, getting some more of the lore, but it's going to give you one of those little insect critters that is actually a currency type that will need to buy boss weapons or boss 
associated remembrance items, as well as donations for, funny enough, the next target right here, whereas sometimes you will see a red lantern that you can soul flay, and this will create a named enemy in the area based on one enemy that already exists there, and killing them will give us a plucked eyeball. Now we'll be able to donate those plucked eyeballs to a shrine behind the umbral vendor, the mole guy, or the guy that upgrades our lanterns at the Skyrest Bridge. Now the door here on the left is the only one that I was incapable of opening or finding an area in order to connect that with, because I know that is connected with some type of lift, but I was, I mean, I pretty much combed this entire area, and I'm not sure where that one comes from. I'm not sure if it comes from a completely different location altogether. Over here on our left, though, we do need to watch out. I got pretty lucky right here. We've got an enemy ready to just push it, push us off. But if anybody watching the video has already made it through that doorway, I would love for you to comment down below. You know, I'll pin your comment if you've found out how to actually open that one up or just uh, giving us a little heads up. You know, no spoilers, but if it's one of those where you got to complete a certain objective or get past a certain point at a different area that possibly connects this with that different area across the map, you know, let us know down in the comments below. But again, pushing forward, you know, I got to reiterate again, I am not the biggest fan of the jump in this game. And you can tell it is plagued me in more than a few ways. It's it's not the worst one, and but it takes some getting used to. But just over there on the left on that body, we will find some crafting material that will help us to upgrade our weapons later on. We will have a blacksmith by the end of this video. We'll, we'll effectively be saving that person and then they will be at the Skyrest Bridge for us to upgrade our weapons. And it is going to be a huge help at sustaining some of that damage. And just here on that corner, again, we've got more of those enemies just ready to push you off. Those devs think they're, they're quite funny. But yet again, once we get that uh, blacksmith, you know, I'll let you know as soon as we have that one available. Because it is going to be a huge help to getting through some of these harder sections and just giving you... Overall, an easier time. Over here at the very back end, we will find a bell staff, which will have a bit of that holy damage stacked on top of physical damage. Could be uh, decent for possibly a caster. You know, just kind of have that funny, almost, you know, similar to those enemy types that we've been facing off with, with the bells on their staffs that are just using some type of magic ranged attacks on us. Uh, honestly, I hate them, but... It would be funny to kind of mimic that in a way if you wanted to. But now we are actually underneath the Skybridge location. We will have to go into the Umbral. We will have another Umbral rift over here yet again. You know, I, I've got to emphasize you definitely want those little shrimpies that we get out of those. And it's going to be a huge help. Now, at this point, you know, it'll seem like we're blocked off over here. But we'll go back into the uh, Axiom, Land of the Living. And we'll actually need to walk halfway across that little walkway that we were just on inside of the umbral in order to drop down. As you'll notice, I have that keen eye for loot. I just took a look over there and I saw that little wisp and I thought to myself, well, we definitely missed something over here. But we'll have to pull out the lamp, walk halfway across, and then drop down. We'll be getting a bludgeoning weapon right here. Nice little, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty much a, a rock tape to a stick, but it seems to hit pretty hard. But we will be able to walk over to this section and we will have to go back into Umbral. Watch out though, as there's going to be three enemies right behind you. They almost got me in that moment, but lucky enough, I was quick enough to be able to beat them all down before that happened. Running all the way across, we'll have a ladder on the other side and we will be facing off with another one of those moths. Technically, you don't have to kill it. You could just grab the loot over here. Uh, I'm... I mean, I can't stress it enough how many times I've had the most frustration with just dealing with these moths and then the sheer amount of these husk creatures all the way around. It gets so crowded sometimes, and then she just vomits up on you, gets all of that wither damage on you, and it just takes one hit from anything, and it's just it's game over right there. Extremely frustrating to have to run all the way back, but... You know, if, if you don't really mind the possibility of not getting the loot or just not getting the uh, vigor from this, you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, this this moth definitely didn't drop anything of real importance, but we will get the Crimson Rector Sword. I did actually change over to this for my two-handed greatsword build. 
it was a little bit of a step up and we will find a different version of this weapon actually a little bit later on that will be even better now just across this little spinal cord for this person over here we'll be bursting the stomach and getting the sky bridge key now as soon as we get that we need to book it all the way to the other end and on the left we need to hit one of those little voodoo shrunken heads and go back into axiom now from that point we'll be heading to the stairs over here on our right and we'll be getting a new crimson rector shield that could be paired with this weapon if you really wanted to but i'm going all two-handed with this one great swords what it is now just up this we're actually going to be back at the main hub for the sky rest bridge you can actually use the lamp to get through this door if you wanted to but we need to go back down as there's another door we need to open and a whole lot more secrets underneath the sky bridge itself down here that we need to uncover now once we come into this room we're actually going to need to go into the umbral as we are going to find ourselves in the mix of quite a few different secrets inside of here not just one i believe there's about three that we'll be uncovering throughout this now from this point we need to go back up the ladder we need to go to the other end we need to pull over this little uh, landing and then we'll be able to soul play the target underneath there cross back on this platform and then we can go up the ladder but we will still need to hit one more with the soul play then we're going to head towards the I don't even know what to call it, mausoleum uh, burial site. We'll go halfway up the stairs and then jump over on top of this little uh, statue or pavilion, if you will, and then jump back down onto the ladder or th the stairs and then head for the ladder. And then we'll be able to burst the stomach over here. Now, this will give us something that may be beneficial for Inferno players, but this will actually be something that we can gift to somebody else as like a little bit of a secret and then gain something else from it. I'm not sure what happens later on in the game if we do this trick, but over here on our right, we will also get an amulet that further increases our damage based on smaller carry weight, or effectively, that's what it seemed like it does from what I read from it. But from that point, we'll go to the right after we come out of that gate, we'll get a couple of those bigger skulls and a chest that gives us an armor set that's Better suited towards holy resistance, as far as I can tell. Seems like something that could be a you know, nice little cosplay, but just behind a couple of graves over here. Now there is a third bigger skull just behind us on this bench over here that we'll be grabbing up, and then we'll be heading up the stairwell. Now up the stairwell on our right, we are actually going to see four. First we'll head over to the left. And then at the other end, we'll actually open up the doorways. That way we're back into the main hall for the Skyrest Bridge. Now you can run out, you know, I, I immediately went and bought the Pilgrim's Perch Key because I just had enough for it and I wanted all the secrets in this zone. As soon as I see a key's up for sale, I'm going to buy that as soon as I can just so any moment that we're traveling through here, I'm able to open those up. But we'll be heading into the Umbral from this point. Hit that Umbral Rift for those little shrimp cocktails, the little uh, tokens over here. And then we'll have a prisoner over here and we can actually give her the item that we found at the top of that uh, ladder. Certain what happens from this point going forward, whether or not she becomes an enemy later on or an ally. But if we head back to the vestige point and we actually rest up, we'll actually come back to this location and she's melted the bars and she's gotten out. And then the caged helmet that she's wearing is what we can pick up from it bit of a weak trade-off in my opinion you know the the helmet itself isn't that great i wouldn't consider it anything that's beneficial for you at the beginning other than just a little bit of cosmetic but maybe that item could have been better for you if you're a spellcaster for me it's not a big deal but it's it's up to you i'm not sure what's going to come out of this but just down the hallway from her we'll be heading into the wall to our right in order to get some more of those bigger skulls and we will get a throwable at the end of this but i'm not certain you know what's going to happen with that character after we help them you know it's it's up to you whether or not you wanted to keep that item it could be beneficial for you but there's our short javelin that we'll be getting as a throwable from jumping down here but i'm interested to see what happens in the coming future with that character after uh, helping her with that item but from this point we're going to be heading back to the vestige point at the sky rest bridge and we'll be teleporting back to the sanctuary vestige point that we were at just before that with all the bells and with the umbral rift inside of there 
that's going to be our next location where we'll be pushing forward from with the ladder off to the left of that vestige point. But so far, I've been pretty much pleased with this game. I'm loving all the secrets. Uh, there's only been one boss fight that I've been particularly super mad about. Now, in this next location, we have more than a few spots where we'll need to use that lamp and keep in mind that there are going to be enemies lurking around every corner in here. From this, we will be able to get the condemned suit and a broken buff bleh, bucket as a weapon, funny enough. But this will actually be one of those uh, starting classes we could have chose at the beginning. We'll just be able to get his full suit. But do keep in mind, every time that you use the lamp in this section, there are enemies lurking around and they can pull you into the umbral. And we will have to go into the umbral, so it won't be too big of a deal. And just over here, we'll actually get uh, some vertebrae, which is going to be something that we can consume in order to get uh, a passive regeneration of soul flays over time after consuming it. But from this point, we'll actually jump to the other end. We'll have another one of those barred up sections that we can move through in the umbral. And we'll actually get a grenade that is effectively like a holy hand grenade. It'd be funny if we had um, you know, some rabbits to deal with inside of this game. Some people might catch that reference. Who knows? Uh, let me know that in the comments. But if you haven't seen that Monty Python uh, skit, it's, it's one for the books. But just down the ladder, we'll actually meet up with a woman that seems to be a follower of a deer. Or I, I'm not even sure if it's a woman, I'm going to be honest. I, I assume, based on some lore pieces that I've had with conversations from Raiden, that that possibly is the person that they were communing about. But she seems to try and get you to understand that, you know, the Orion is not the way, and a deer is the way, and freedom, you know, yada, yada, yada. They're just having that you know, constant manipulation tactic to say that the other side's just doing you wrong and they're leading you astray and you'd be better suited for, you know, the stronger side, I suppose, is basically the argument trying to be made there. But moving past her and down the next ladder, we're actually going to find ourselves in a room where it's going to end up being a boss fight. Now, the boss is going to hang over to the right, but we won't be aggroed on her just yet. Over to our left, we'll actually get a piece that bit more towards the lore side of things. If you take this back to the Raiden character at the Skyrest Bridge, he'll give you a little bit of insight based on what it is and uh, I guess who used it, but it may be something that helps us progress through certain areas later on as well. Now with this boss fight, we will need to pop one of those little uh, items over on the right with our lamp, but obviously the first go of it didn't go so well, but as soon as you come in, if you go in straight away, pop that, and then be able to just kind of push back a little bit. What we're going to be dealing with is a bit of a slower enemy type. All we have to really do is just avoid the kicks and the flail attacks. It's going to be a one-two strike type of deal. And then you'll get one attack in. She might do the, uh, the kick. And then in those moments you can tell it's pretty easy to just kind of like stagger it on down. I effectively just used heavy attacks on this target just trying to break the poise on it and then get them down as this is when it got the most dangerous it's very similar to a lot of those enemies that we've uh, or that you may have faced off with already anytime you see that yellow halo on them they could be somebody that either heals themselves or does a good bit of that holy damage it can be extremely frustrating but thankfully this center wasn't too hard to take down a lot of heavy attacks. I'd say if you're somebody that's ranged, it's going to be a little bit easier, but we will get the Scourge Sisters Flail. It's not that great in my opinion. I'm kind of bummed that it didn't have any holy damage to it, but you know, maybe you'll be able to imbue it with something else later on. There'll also be one of those little stomachs over on the right side, just behind that little thing that we popped. That'll actually give us one of the crafting material to upgrade our healing potions. And do watch out for the red boils on the walls as each one of those is going to explode anytime you hit it and be extra careful when you're attacking any enemy that's near a ledge as this is possibly something that might happen more than a few times yeah i've definitely had it happen way too many times now just down here we'll actually be falling down to this lower section but we need to actually go into the umbral as there's something just behind us uh, maybe technically you don't have to go in. Well, yes, yeah, you will have to go into the umbral because we will have to jump across this one. It basically forced you into this one. 
Now, over here, we're actually getting the lacerating knife, which is a throwable knife, which is pretty nice because it only cost one of your throwable item slots at a time, anytime you use it. So it can come in handy in more than a few situations where you might not want to be using as many or you're trying to conserve on your ammo pouches, but you're still trying to just get that little bit of damage. And there it is, Nick right there, giving us a nice 10 gifted subs there in the middle of the stream. Greatly appreciate it yet again. But sadly enough, I, I do feel like I need to minimize the size of that taking up the screen so this doesn't interfere with some of the guides in the coming future. Make that a little bit smaller. That way it's not just taking up the whole screen almost. But luckily enough, it's just in this section where it's the first time we're actually able to use that Pilgrim's Key in order to unlock one of the secrets for this location. And we'll be getting a, a set of armor from this chest. It's going to be a bit more towards the tanky side of things. I try to keep myself at, you know, pretty much maximum medium, if you will, as close to heavy without being heavy as possible. But the actual bell helmet ended up being pretty nice for an additional physical damage reduction. Now, coming out of that cave over there, we'll be heading over to the left first. You know, I was getting ready to just jump across that. The jumps in this game just breaking me down over here, getting me, uh, you know, making me feel like my legs are coming out from underneath me. But... We'll be getting some withered salt from up there and just down on the other section we'll actually be getting the hollowed bow which actually has all the different types of elemental damage to it it's a pretty nice bow it probably sets somebody up pretty nicely at the uh, beginning portion if you're playing a ranged character actually but then heading up from there we have i believe this might be the first meeting with the spike head this guy is absolutely frustrating I cannot stand him. He is going to be one that you're probably going to be best friends with more than a few times. Every time he slams his head, it feels like it's a one shot. And then there's going to be moments where he just bum rushes you and just either throws you off, throws himself off, which I think actually just happened. He, I think he actually charged and just ran over the edge, which can happen, but that, that guy can be pretty tanky and really frustrating. But just over there, we will have that plane shield to grab up. Then we'll be jumping over onto this platform and pulling ourselves across. Now it can be a little bit finicky. You do want to feel or be a little bit closer to the edge. I'm not a huge fan of getting close to the edge as you know, it's one of those moments that makes me feel like the animation might get me to pull across, but that's just me. Now, yet again, we've got another one of those spike heads. Luckily enough, he drops down and then I was able to get the uh, drop down attack on him. Now just behind us, we actually want to go back down as we want to kick this bridge over. That way, if there's any instances, you know, going forward that if we die, this will make for a shorter or a little shortcut for us to get through a little bit faster after running through things. And just over on the right, we'll actually get the common Orion prayer as a gesture. Not sure whether or not it could be useful for utilizing in, in front of some statue or something later on to open something up, but... Grabbing up as many as possible can't hurt at all. And again, do keep in mind how close you are to the edges. You could find yourself animation swinging straight over a lot of these ledges. Now, luckily enough, I did kind of just land in a little bit of a lucky spot, but I still ended up having some trouble over here. But there is a ring down here, and I will be showcasing how to get down here without dropping down in that manner. But sadly enough, I did end up... Uh, waiting too long but we'll get the defaced ring which is actually going to give us even more vitality or more health to our health bar and now we'll be showcasing on how to get down there properly without just throwing yourself over the edge but that ring is going to work in great combination with the stamina regeneration and stamina increase ring that we found in the beginning area or the starter area but at this point, we actually do want to go into the Umbral to get down to that lower location. But I did actually just drop down myself. You will take a little bit. Of, well, you take a lot of damage from dropping down to that. Whew, goodness. But if you drop down, it's not a good idea. You want to go into the Umbral and then go down there. If you do want to face off with that uh, moth down there, there may be. Uh, I'm trying to remember. If I did end up killing it, doesn't look like it. It must have just spawned in at its own leisure. I must have just been too long in the umbral, and that's why that moth spawned down there. But going up to the top, we'll actually be able to use one of those shrunken head voodoo dolls 
in order to get back into Axiom. Now from that point we'll have a little bit of a, a terrifying platformer moment yet again, but thankfully it's a bit easier than the ones we've had beforehand. And just over to our left we will have the Hallowed Praise, which is seems to be some type of bleeding type sword, one that's better suited for sword and shield, not a great sword type of weapon. So if you're looking for something like that, could be pretty beneficial for you. Now heading up over into this section, we'll go up the ladder and then head over to the right. You'll want to pop into Umbral, as there's going to be another one of those stomachs we need to pop. And from this, we'll actually be getting the, is it the Holy Bleed Ring, which is going to give us the capability of having more bleed resistance from enemies that we'll be phasing off with. Sadly enough, we've got another one of those spike heads. You could just run past these guys, but at the same time, you know, I feel like I have to kill everything at least once as I'm pushing through the game. But at this section over here, what we're going to be doing is going into the umbral and over to our right. We'll be finding ourselves a little bit of a secret pathway. We'll have to do a little bit more of that platforming. Hopefully it goes uh, well for you as it did for me in this one section. But then we'll be pulling ourselves across on this platform and we'll be knocking down a ladder over here. We'll need to get that done first and then over to our right we will have another piece of that loot what we got over here i believe this is going to be the yep the thorned crimson rector sword this is the one that gives us the bleeding capability the better one that i was talking about i started using that a little bit later on i don't think i initially used it because it was 10 attack power less but i ended up using it later on just to have that capability of utilizing the bleed on different enemy types now we will have another enemy up top here, but we will also be getting some of that crafting material for upgrading our weapon at the top of that ladder, so you do want to head up there and grab that up. Now, sadly enough, I still ended up dying over here, even though the spike head guy got stuck over there in the corner. But what we'll need to do is actually go over to the left where that open passage is. He's got one of those things protecting him, and that's why he seems so tanky. So now we wait for him to come over and then I was actually able to just push him over the edge. Made it a whole lot easier. And now in this next room we'll have our next vestige point where we'll be able to basically be utilizing this one for connecting every single one of the next locations. It's pretty much the main hub vestige point in this location. Now over to our right you can use the key, the Pilgrim's Purge key, in order to get into this room, but I would not suggest going in this direction just yet. Those enemies inside there are going to be extremely powerful, and you end up wanting to actually go left, as these are going to be the enemy types that are going to be on your same level by this point. You definitely want to clear this section out before ever entering into there. I went headfirst into the other location, and I wasted a huge amount of time on a bunch of enemies that basically... I mean, they were just eating hits. Some of these lower type enemies were actually in and pretty much ending up taking about five hits just to take them down. And they were hitting so much harder. It, it, it's not a good time. Trust me. And I probably wasted about an hour in that section over there, if not a little bit longer before heading in this direction. And over on our right, we will get another one of those umbral eyes that we can socket into our lamp after we've gone back to the Skyrest bridge. Now I didn't see it as being something hugely beneficial for me but who knows it could be something that's uh, better suited for you but later on we will be getting after we've moved on to some different areas not in this video just yet but we will be getting an upgrade to our lamp so we will have two sockets for it. But over on the left we will have that chest that's full of some armor that's a bit more heavy duty something for a tankier type of build, one that's getting a lot more of that physical damage reduction. So if you're looking for some type of armor like that, trust me, those are going to be pretty solid. That, bleh, pretty solid that are coming out of that chest. Now heading on down through here, we get a little bit of those minor fire assaults, giving us the capability of imbuing our weapon with a little fire. And over to our left, we will be getting a little bit more of that cosmetic color that we can place on some of our armors to give us a little bit of a different look. Now just down from those two enemies we will have another one of those shrunken head voodoo dolls that we'll be coming back into Axiom with. And sadly enough we won't be able to use this lift just yet, but later on we will be unlocking that for ourselves. <clears throat> now from this point you'll notice there, or you might not be able to see it just yet, but there's one of those spiky head guys right there. 
and decided to use the drop down attack on that as you'll notice it did a thousand damage right there basically made him one shot sometimes that's the best way to get it done you can really cheese certain moments i mean even if you uh not work I guess the idea would be if you felt like this is a little bit too difficult for you, maybe don't like the knights, don't like the uh, spike head guys, you could just run back, jump up on that ladder, wait for them to come over, and then just kind of cheese it in that way. Just keep drop attacking them, as this is one of those locations where you're not going to be taking damage from some of those drops. Other locations, it may be a bit more difficult, but sometimes you can utilize that to kind of give you that little bit of an advantage advantage in certain locations now there is a ladder on the left side that you can drop down in order to kind of like close the gap as a little bit of a different shortcut i didn't see it as being that useful i actually kind of missed it but i never had to really use it but it could be beneficial for you and that's going to be on the opposite side from where we are right now in order to drop that down but we will also have this umbral rift over here so you want to get a couple of those shrimps up those tokens are going to be pretty useful later on then we'll be dropping down over on this side and from the point of being an umbral we'll have an item over here on the left which is going to be the spiky head helmet which apparently i've already found one before i guess it can drop off some of those enemies similar to elden ring where if you know you kill enough of some of these enemies they have that random loot drop moment but just across with this platform over here we have another one of those moths to deal with a lot of times i usually deal with these moths with just simply striking them with heavy strikes just charging up that heavy attack as it'll generally stagger them and it even caused the moments when they have that aoe damage or any type of attack they may be doing it'll actually break them out of the capability of utilizing that attack now just back there we were able to get up what was the item kind of get lost there ah it's going to be our first amulet this is going to be something that's going to further increase our health as well so it's going to be hugely beneficial for us. Great start for, you know, finally getting all the sockets filled with this one. Now, I tried to use the drop down attack on this guy right here. And for whatever reason, there's certain ledges that when you come off of it, it I guess it just doesn't have enough height to drop the damage on. But he definitely ran up right behind me. But you'll notice, yet there was that moment right there where I was able to strike down. It's a bit finicky sometimes. But it, it, when it works, it works. It works really well. But when it doesn't, it's extremely frustrating. Now, we will need to go into Axiom for this location. There's going to be more than a few enemies down here. So I'd, I'd highly suggest killing these enemies first. As, as soon as we uh, go for the loot that's in the center, we will have a couple of those moths spawning in. Now, this is probably the one time that I ran away from these moths. So I just did not feel like dealing with them broke this open, grabbed up the item, which is actually going to be something that we'll be going to talk with the Umbral Virgent inside of Skyrest Bridge, similar to some of those other items that I've been talking about, where you'll have lower pieces with, uh, with Raiden, the bowl, something. I'm not certain on whether or not this is going to be very significant for us, but it could be something that's beneficial for us later on to possibly passing through one of the umbral gateways or something along those lines, as this is something that will, when you bring it up to uh, the umbral vendor or the lamp upgrade guy at the Skyrest Bridge, he almost talks about it in the way of like a riddle, like it's something for a passageway. So, I mean, we've got it, so whenever... One of those locations comes about, we'll be ready. We'll be ready to open it, hopefully, and just not have to worry about it at all. But, you know, that's that's one of the greater portions of trying to be that completionist and grabbing up everything in every area you go through. You're prepared for every scenario going forward. But jumping down over to our left, we'll actually get some more of that ammo pouch, a little bit more of those crafting materials or consumable materials that may help us out later on. So I've started to use them much more often especially the uh, healing rocks. Let's pop a couple of those in the mouth. You're doing pretty good. Saving on some of those health potions, that's for sure. Now from this point, we, we are, I believe it was, there's two of the spiky head guys on this location. There's one on the left and then there's one on the right. Thankfully, one of them just, you, you saw him just run over the edge, but you can use the lamp in order to throw these guys over the ledge. I'm still a, a little bit confused on how to get the direction properly with throwing them with the uh, 
the soul flay of the lamp. But at this location, we will have to go into Umbral. So we're going to have to pop in to open up the doorway with that we're going through just now. And walk down to the lower section. Over here on the top right, we've got the first soul flay that we'll need to conduct. And then over to our left, we've got another one. And now we'll need to go up under the platform that we're on right now. Be a couple more of those little husk creatures over here. I don't believe there's one of the moths. As long as we don't stick around too long. But we'll also have another piece of loot down here to grab up. With plenty of these husks to deal with. In large groups they can be extremely dangerous. And we'll also get the Book of Sin, which is another one of those lore pieces from Raiden. Again, still not certain whether or not these are things that may be beneficial to unlocking certain areas or possibly unlocking side quests, maybe, who knows. But having them is never going to hurt. And as we progress through, once I find out, or once I find more to what the uses might possibly be, I'll start to communicate that as I go through the guides, going through the rest of the game. But heading down from this, we'll have... More than a few locations where you could put a checkpoint, but I would not suggest it just yet as just down at the bottom right here. You want to just run and jump on that lift, honestly, because it's going to head straight up to where that, that bell room uh, vestige point is. If you remember where the guy is sitting there and we've got the bell door as well that was off to the right that I told you was uh, you know much higher level. You might as well just jump on that lift and go all the way up. That way you can just rest up and just have this location easily capable of going back down to. Now I ended up going back to the uh, Skyrest Bridge. And as I told you before, you know, you can hand over that bowl that we just found. He starts to talk about it in a, a form of a riddle. And you can go down to Raiden and communicate with him based on the items we just found. But at the same time, you do want to upgrade your healing potions, get another one of those, and possibly just anything that could be an upgrade for you. And at the same time, upgrade your level. But do be careful after coming out of that lift as over to the left, we will be capable of being dropped down to the ground, having multiple dogs on us, the night on us. It can be a painful situation, but this room in particular is going to be beneficial for us and you do want to kill the knight as if you kill the knight, we get the prison cell key. You want that no matter what, as on the other side of this room is where our blacksmith is going to be. Now, just behind this, next to this waterfall, we've got some... I can't even remember the name of it. Effectively, some more consumable. Now, that is another door that we can use... Or we can use the Pilgrim's Perch key on. I would not suggest opening it just yet. This is another one of those sections where these enemies are way stronger. And it's a bit confusing why they, why they make one little side section outside here with a bunch of enemies that are almost extremely overpowered. And especially when there's only one piece of loot out there, which, I mean, it's not the worst piece of loot, but it's a bit confusing to me why they would make some of these doors with this key where it's like the level of the enemies behind that door are far beyond what you're capable of facing off with at this time. Now, we will talk to the woman that's the blacksmith behind there. Give her the key. That way, we can actually go back, hit that lift up top, go and rest up, and then come back down here. As you notice, I, I tried messing with those enemies more than a few times because I want the loot. Every time I, I'm hard-headed, I don't care how hard these enemies are, I'm going to keep trying until I somehow get them down, and I, whew, I will waste a good bit of time. But after going to that vestige point and coming back down, you'll notice that she's escaped, and she's actually left us some of the crafting material for upgrading our weapons. And on the other side of that, if we go into the umbral, we've got a chest that gives us a ring that gives us all status effect. Or I should say resistance to all status effects which is a little bit better you know it could be one of those rings that you pop on giving you a little bit more of that damage reduction especially if you're more towards like the physical damage reduction like me now if you're really hard-headed like i am and you really want that loot after you come back to this location after getting a good bit of levels my whole game plan was to run out there commit suicide go into the umbral force 
some of them over the edge and then I ended up just literally running back into this room and just kind of cheesing it just going up the ladder and started using throwables it just made it so much easier I wasted so much time earlier just trying to get the loot out of this and it, it's literally one necklace I'm not going to say it's hugely worth it uh, and I'm not going to say you really even need to kill anybody I mean if you have the capability of running out there and just grabbing it I mean more power to you man because th this was absolutely absurd to me how behind this door like the level of these enemies just it was just too dangerous especially the the multitude of different enemy types there's like three ranged two bigger boys and ah, it's just way too dangerous in my opinion just for one amulet which is the warrior's claw that's going to further increase our physical damage and physical damage resistance or physical defense which isn't bad but for what we had to face over here it is absolutely absurd and it is one of those moments that makes me feel that some of the game was balanced around having two players now from this portion i would highly suggest going back up the lift and going back to the skyrest bridge if you haven't already to actually visit with the blacksmith and upgrade your weapon but if you have gotten that done already we'll be heading past where those enemies were ready to knock us off and we'll actually be going down some ladders down to a lift and meeting with the uh, person that seems to be a fan of a deer again and then right after that finding ourselves in the midst of a little bit of a boss fight we'll be facing off with three dogs and a bit of a stronger archer now the thing that i would focus on first is getting rid of the hounds as the hounds will continuously spawn through the fight but having those three at the beginning or it might just be two at the beginning i'm not even certain but just having those aggro you during that whole time, they, they can deal quite a bit of damage and they can just really rough you up when it comes to certain moments where just trying to maintain the capability of closing in with the archer as the best bet, or at least for me, was closing in, getting close enough to where I could get one of those heavy strikes in as... This archer doesn't have a whole lot of poise to them. It's pretty easy to stagger them and get some of that added damage from those moments. As you'll notice, it happened more than a few times during this fight. But even then, when getting close to this archer, she can pull out her knife and then stab at you. So do keep that in mind. Look for that animation. Like right there, she will reach for her hip and then be ready to slash forward. It can be pretty devastating when it comes to the damage. But as long as you can get that one heavy strike in, get that stagger in, and then roll back, and then start going left or right. You don't necessarily have to strafe, but moving constantly to the left or the right is going to be beneficial for avoiding some of those arrows. And the utmost dangerous one is when she's got that elemental status effect of the holy damage with it. You want to get rid of that pretty quickly. Luckily enough, I was able to get this done on the first go. We've got that center judged will get a sword from this along with a few bits of armor not the greatest sword but it could be something beneficial for you but after that was done i headed back to that person that was uh, a fan of a deer bought up the flame grenade that they had thinking it was going to be pretty good it actually wasn't a great throwable for me but who knows it could be something based on uh, needing inferno or some type of spellcaster possibly getting more from it but just down from the uh, point of that boss fight we'll be walking into our next vestige point this is actually going to progress forward to the next area that you actually want to go for the main quest line but we're actually going to walk out just a bit find that strange guy out there that gave us a stick he's now a vendor and find a map over to our left but we're going to head back to that vestige point for the purpose of this video to give us the guide for breaking down the uh the full area of pilgrim's perch now we'll be heading back to the bell room vestige point and we'll be heading into that room that i told you you don't want to go into just yet as it's going to have those stronger enemies in it now as soon as we come in we're going to be dealing with one archer and one knight get pretty acclimated with these knights they're uh they're actually a whole lot easier than you think they're they're more aggro when there's more enemies around them 
But generally, if it's 1v1 with these knights, I, I never have a problem anymore. He's either a 1 to 2 strike and then goes up over his head. And you'll notice as soon as he has that mace over his head, he'll have a little twitch moment and then he'll just slam down. And it's super easy to just trail in with some of those attacks. But over on the left side from those enemies, we'll have a wall that we can actually walk into and we'll be meeting up with the angler loot. This has been something... That has been absolutely devastating for me. And if you want to know how to find this every single time. Anytime you see loot on the ground. Generally there is a flame that just basically stands still almost. It may wiggle very very slightly. But if it is one of those moments where it is wiggling. Like there is a flame that is dancing in the wind. As you'll notice over here on the left. It just seems to be going left right. It's got deep curves to it. That's going to be the angler loot. That is an absolutely nightmare creature for me because I am, I am very prone to just going and grabbing that as quickly as possible. But in this room, I died to the uh, moth a couple of times, but I believe this is one of those moths that you actually want to kill as it's going to give you some pretty decent loot from it. I can't remember if this one actually did give me a uh, vestige key or vestige seed every time. I think it's a key, but it's, it's actually a seed. Sadly enough, it wasn't the vestige seed this time, but we did get some of those crafting material for upgrading our weapon. But you'll notice that it's just dancing. It'll have that curve to it, and you'll never see that with any of the other. You may see a small deviation, almost like that of like a, a just a very slight one. But I had to test it yet again just to see whether or not that was truly it, and you'll just see it dancing away. It, it moves like a worm, I guess is the best way to put it, whereas the, the other one's more like a, a small murmur on a some type of graph, I suppose. But moving down from there, we will have two archers and more than a few enemies in here and do not fall into the pit in front of us. This is probably one of the few times that I have not jumped down and just immediately tried to kill all the enemies in this room. There's three spike head guys down there. It is... It's devastating, and if you go down there in Umbral, it gets even worse. It's it's not a fun time, and it's just not worth the vigor, in my opinion. I'm going to be honest with you. It's just an absolute headache down there, and there's only one piece of loot to grab up down there, and that's the only reason I would ever go down there. Now, from this point, we'll be crossing back over into Axiom, and there is going to be a ranged enemy at the other side of that circular room over there, so do keep that in mind. I did try to just uh, get this archer with the uh, with the lamp. But that that did not work out at all. But over on the left side of this pit over here, we'll actually have a, I believe it's a holy hammer. But you'll notice how ridiculous it gets down there. I mean, there's just too many enemies down there. This is yeah, it is going to be a hammer that has that holy damage attached to it. But luckily. You know, we don't have to deal with that being down there anymore. You pretty much just want to grab that up and then head over to the ladder on the uh, the opposite side. But the most dangerous thing in here is probably going to be those uh, crossbows. For whatever reason, they, it feels like they have the most damage in this game, and I cannot stand them. God, they are the most frustrating thing in this game to me. Every time I see one of those archers, those or these little... Those bell staves that start throwing things. You know, at least with these guys, it's a bit easier to telegraph it. With the crossbowman, it's like he's got one shot and then he's got another one just ready out of nowhere. Like he's got a double shot crossbow. I mean, this uh, absurd. Absolutely frustrating. I can't stand it at all. But they I just make quick work of them as quickly as you possibly can. Similar to this guy, I absolutely hate this enemy type, and there's certain instances where I've faced off with him where he basically can just one-shot me some of his swings. I don't know how much holy damage he's got on that sword, but it gets even worse when you find out the fact that by the time you get him to half health, he can just end up healing himself, and not only does he heal himself, if he's got other enemies around him, he will also continuously heal them at the same rate. I mean, this, this guy gets way too overpowered, in my opinion. He's got so many different abilities that just work in his favor, a lot of damage. He may not have the strongest health bar in the game, but 
this is a, a devastating enemy to actually face off with, especially if he's in the midst of a group. It, it's absurd to me. But if you catch him off guard before he can cast his little holy spell, you may be able to get him down pretty quickly. But just inside of that room where we found him, we'll have the brawn ring, which is going to further increase our strength if we wear it. And moving from that section, we will also have another one of those enemies that pushes us right outside this doorway. Absolutely frustrating. And then we will have an archer over to our left side. It will highly suggest getting a throwable out to take care of that. As uh, you know, I, I thought yet again, maybe I might be able to sneak up on him. Nope. Fallen prey to those arrows yet again. Then we'll find another hammer over here on the left, which is actually going to be a bleed type hammer. Could be beneficial for some of those players out there with a strength build. Looking for a little more of that status effect on top of uh, the pure strength that they're laying down. But moving over to the right side, we will have another one of those bellies to pop over here with the soul flay. Got to be an umbral for this one, and we'll get another one of those umbral eyes over here. Then heading back, go deeper into this cave over here after we deal with more than a few of these husks. It's unreal. Over here on the left side, I did end, or over here on the right first, we'll need to grab up a little bit of that crafting material. It's the large chunk. We actually need that for further upgrading our weapon even further. But back there, just before that ladder, I actually ended up making a checkpoint right there as it just made life a whole lot easier for me. Uh, we, we've got enemies and tight spaces over here. We've got a boss fight coming up. There, There's so many different things coming that you end up wanting to just look over at this flower bed over here. This is the first time I've used it without being just dumb. Obviously, that first one in the uh, first video, right after the boss fight, dropping it on that flower bed. Ridiculous. But right here, it, it does end up being something that helps us quite a bit as not only is facing off with these two enemies pretty frustrating inside of this tight corridor but if you can get that dog down first you should have a little bit of an easier time sometimes it gets a bit frustrating with the camera angles inside of this tight space but you should be able to get the smack down on that night but after we're done with him in the next coming room if we move to the left we'll actually be into a boss fight and this is going to be Another one of those enemy types that we'll be facing off with a bit more regularly later on. As soon as we walk in, we need to get the lamp out, hit that RB in order to pop that little protection thing, side, whatever it is, from the umbral. And then over on our left side, we'll need to take down one of those ranged attacks. And what I ended up doing was backing up to where that entrance was. We will also need to pop one of them that's on him as well. And then... We're basically working with a double hammer swing. The most devastating this thing uh, or this boss can do is hit himself in the head. When anytime you see him getting ready to slam his own head, you need to be ready to block. Otherwise, you're going to be taking a massive amount of damage. This moment, right there. Anytime you see him pop his hands out like that, you need to immediately just hit block. It is the only way to deter that damage that I've seen. Uh, it's possible you might be able to dodge it, but it's so quick that in certain instances, especially when you're right up on top of him, you might not be able to get the timing properly. It's a really quick telegraph moment, in my opinion. But for the most part, the rest of his attacks are pretty simple. It's generally going to be a little bit delayed. He has one swing, then he's got one massive swing, and then he comes in with another that's a little bit delayed. He kind of does that swing, so you'll have to wait for him to get that wind up. Yeah, you'll notice it right there. We had it circling over his head for once, then the jump. But anytime he kneels down to charge up that holy damage on that, you can get a couple of swings in on that moment. Get a couple of heavy swings. The grab, super easy to dodge right there. Really nice telegraph on that one. Thankfully, this, this enemy type is uh, not the hardest to face off with, and there will be a couple of instances later on where this will be a normal enemy type that we'll be facing off with. I did end up using the Soul Flay on him a little bit later on. This is uh, pretty beneficial, actually, considering it does stop him from attacking you, gives you the opportunity to basically freeze the time on him and get 
a good bit of that damage in in that moment. But you'll notice I'll actually end up using it here at the end. I should have started striking him in that moment, but then boom, he does that bell head attack again, and I'm out of health potions right now. Don't know what to do. Boom, soul flay ended up getting me. Now, there for a second, I thought I was a bit uh, out of sorts as the it, it target locked onto the soul flay instead of him, but we will be ending up getting a, another holy hammer off of him. And another sinner judged. Now, from that point, we'll need to clean up the rest of the enemies. Thankfully, if you go behind the building, for whatever reason, these ranged guys don't actually come out and attack you, thankfully. But then heading into the circular room that they started from, we'll actually get a piece of parchment that we can throw as an explosive of holy damage, which is a bit interesting. And then a staircase over on the left that will lead up to a chest that gives us a spell of a deer. Some type of flame spell, I believe. Or an, an ally. I can't remember specifically. But another one of those spells for some of those people out there that may be a caster. And then coming out over to our left, we will actually have some more of that crafting material for our weapon upgrades. Over to our right, we'll be getting an enhanced hatchet. Or enhanced bloody hatchet, which does substantial more damage. And later on in the video, we'll actually be finding what I consider to be the best throwable so far. Which would be a little hammer. But... That enhanced uh, hatchet is really strong by itself, and it only costs two per throw. It's pretty nice. And yet again, we're, we're stuck facing off with old spiky head here. Still frustrating as ever. But moving forward, we'll have another one of those bell staffs to deal with. And before we head up that ladder, we'll actually want to go into the building behind where that bell staff guy was. There's actually going to be a chest that gives us a large amount of that crafting material for upgrading our weapon. And then at the same time, we want to go further back as to knock down this ladder. And this will actually connect us with the vestige point in the, uh, the which one was it? The bell room vestige point. That way we can rest up, breathe easy, get that health back in and get ready to... Also, level up before you move on with all that vigor we've got built up. But at the same time, we'll be able to move back in with a fresh slate, fresh everything restocked. Now, from this point, we are going to be dealing with more than a few of the uh, spiky head guys. It's who? It's a good time going up this vertical incline. Now, just behind us, there's actually going to be a barrel. You know, they're going to play a little bit of a Donkey Kong moment, so keep a keep an eye out for that. I don't know. They're not going to actually knock you off. Thankfully, I was able to avoid it. But old Spiky Head, that's one thing I can't avoid. He came in strong with this one. and I tried to soul flay him over the edge, and he's got that charge ability to just one-shot me almost. Absolutely devastating. Then, I was able to get it done properly. That felt good. But, one thing that we need to do is actually go into Umbral before we start heading all the way up. As we drop down over to this uh, rooftop over here, we've got to pop that stomach over there. And what seems to be something we could socket into a weapon or a shield, I haven't been able to, or I'm not sure how to apply that. I'm not sure what, I haven't found a weapon or I haven't looked deep enough to find whether or not I can go to the blacksmith and I, I guess socket that into something, but... That could be beneficial for us later on. We'll have that ready. There's going to be two different archers up top here, and then there's going to be another two archers and a knight over on top of this section over here. Sadly enough, I'm already an umbral, and you'll notice there's some moments where if you're an umbral, who that fight's going to be uh, three times as hard as it should be. Now, luckily enough, coming back, I was able to take down both of the archers. We'll need to pull out the lamp and pull off the uh, protective little amoeba that's on top of this knight over here and then 1v1 nothing easier than facing off with this knight he's no crucible knight that's for sure this one flops over pretty easily won't be taking this lift just yet but we will be opening this door back here and then we'll have another one of those healing guys absolutely frustrating to deal with but luckily enough i was able to soul flee him over the edge or i thought i was oh that's right i got i got lucky as soon as I died and went into the umbral, that pushed him off. Then I was able to face off with the moth. Now the moth by itself, you know, not too bad, but when you get the knight, the two archers, and everything else going, oh man, that's a, that's a devastating playing field. 
but we did get a vestige seed off of that one moth right there. So that's that's a good moth to kill. Now we've got another one of those fist weapons. That one's actually going to be a bleeder. Which, I mean, I guess it's serrated a little bit. Now, oh, right here, we got another one of those enemies that pushes us off. Oh, don't get caught like I did. That is... That's, that's almost as frustrating to just watch as it is to actually happen to you. But moving on from that portion, we've got another one of those bell staffs over on the edge. We'll be able to knock them off pretty quickly and then another knight to face off with. Now, in this next room, I would suggest, you know, it's it's not the... You don't have to, but I did drop a vestige seed inside of this next zone that we're about to go into just in this uh, room right here. I did put one down as the next area that we're about to walk into. There's a knight plus one of those healer knights. There's a ranged, I think there's two ranged enemies. It was pretty frustrating and we do have to push a little bit more forward from this point. So if you're one of those people that likes to at least kill one of each of these enemies, that might not be a bad idea right there to pop down that unless you just want to keep running up that and then just running past everything to get to this point and then fight them you know it's up to you but up this ladder on top of this building there actually is another ring that we can grab up over here now for whatever reason they, they don't seem to jump up on top of here they seem to be protected if you don't uh, if you don't just jump down but we've got the slinger's ring which is going to give us additional damage for throwables now i tried to cheese them right here by doing that drop down attack thing you'll notice he was healing both of them and then they cheesed me i tried dropping down you could tell i was definitely about to swing but for whatever reason i got caught on their shoulders and i still got hit by their attacks a little bit cheeky in my opinion but what seems to be the play here is to actually walk out and then knock off the two right there, the knight and the other one. And then all you've got to deal with is this, uh, you know, holy knight over here and one archer. Get rid of that guy pretty quickly. And you will still be able to get that drop down damage from this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It can be uh, a bit finicky, but luckily enough, I was able to actually just throw him off the lamp. I felt pretty good right there. Now, moving down from this section, it's going to get a little bit dangerous. We've got one of those uh, ranged attacks, not only uh, on our right, but also on our left. We've got another couple of knights as well. So do keep that in mind. We're going to have more than a few enemies over here to deal with. And then there's another one over here on our left. Now, you can activate the lift on our left to make things a little bit easier if you didn't already put the vestige seed behind you, as that's going to connect us with that uh, section down below. Inside of this room, though, we'll have two of those ranged attackers on either side. And if you end up going into Umbral, you're going to have two Reapers to deal with. So keep that in mind. Um, honestly, I, I did not face off with them. Every time that I see them, they just, uh, they're just they a bit too frustrating for me. If, it, if it's not a must kill, when it comes to some of these Umbral creatures, I'm, I'm out. But just over there, then we've got another ring to grab up over here that gives us more holy defense and a little bit of those uh, armor pieces that accompany that. I think this was one of those moments where I ended up going into the umbral on accident. Oh no, I forced myself out. So I was just trying to face off with it. I ended up getting some of the items for one of these reapers there's generally two of them uh, apparently one of them already died somehow i'm guessing that's how that loot was there and i just didn't even notice but they're just not a fun one to fight with me or <laughs> with me they're just not one that's fun to fight in my opinion and i just do not enjoy taking on that enemy type it's just uh they always try to run from me. I feel like I need to use throwables and they dodge throwables. Like. But we'll be taking that lift back up as it's not going to be the thing that pushes us into the next location. We'll be heading back to the lift that we passed up earlier in order to grab up another one of those vestige points that gets us to the next zone that we'll need to access in a different guide. But we'll have to face off with some of those knights again. We'll be walking past. You'll notice there's the... Uh, vestige point that I spawned in for myself back there and sadly enough 
It almost felt a little bit wasted as we're basically in between two points that are vestige points. But we'll be getting on to this uh, lift going up. And just at the top, we'll be facing off of the bunch of boxes over here that'll sadly enough not get us any loot but just over on the right side of this pathway coming up we will find a couple of those salts i believe that'll be some holy ward and just up top over here on our right is going to be our next vestige point now i'll be pushing into this zone in a different video but we'll be taking this vestige point and warping back to the Bell room vestige point and then taking a right from that and going back up to the sector where we had that boss fight in that one room and actually going back behind that this time in order to basically circle back around to the sky rest bridge from the pilgrim's purge we will have a knight to deal with over here and do be careful as there is a archer that is up at the top of the staircase he can come around the corner and start firing off at you and during that fight with that, it could be pretty frustrating. Again, we've got another one of those spiky head guys over here. More than a few difficult enemies that we're about to face off with in this section over here. And they will be a little bit tankier if you haven't leveled yourself up a little bit. So uh, do keep that in mind. You know, some of these zones, you may want to progress a little bit into other areas or go further with the. Uh, pushing into the main areas, like I said before, with that first vestige point that we found, you know, you might want to just roll in through there. It's going to be a whole lot easier for you. And I'll have that guide coming out tomorrow, actually. But heading up this way, we've got another one of those knights to deal with and more than a few dogs in the next room. But if you do end up going into Umbral, don't even worry about it. We've got a vestige point that's just around the corner and we've got one of those voodoo uh, shrunken head dolls over here to get us back into Axiom. And just over here on our left, we'll also find, I believe it's a bleeding weapon. We've got the bloody glory. This is going to be something that has a little bit more to do with radiance, I believe. So maybe there's a bit of like holy damage with that or something for a, a caster slash melee type of player. Who knows? Could be pretty uh, decent for you. But heading out of that cave, we'll find our vestige point over here on the left, the Dieter. And then just off to the left of that, we will find another ring that's actually going to further increase, uh, or it's going to give us the capability of regenerating a little bit of health after using one of our health vials. Sadly enough, when walking past this entrance, every time you're going to aggro the dogs and the knight inside of this cave, I really wish it didn't work like this. I don't feel like it should work like this. Even if you walk slowly past this doorway, they still come out every single time. It is extremely frustrating that if you end up dying, you always have to have this fight right here every single time. Well, not, not every single time, but every single time that you may have to go into this next area in front of us right here. You can run past some of this up to a certain point without any of them chasing you, but it is pretty irritating if you're just going into this next little zone a couple of times where we have to deal with some pretty aggro enemy types and large groups. And just having to basically fight these guys each time, it's, it's a little bit obnoxious, honestly. But over here, you'll notice we have another one of those stomachs to pop over here on the wall once we get into Axiom. But we have a dog and another archer over here. I used throwables on them. They do have one of those protective umbral things that just basically heals them instead of making them invincible. But we'll also have a bit of a new enemy type if you haven't seen this one already and moved into certain areas. He's a bit easier... Than uh, the boss unit we basically fought off with. Uh, some some could say that. But some of his moves are a little bit irritating. As he does have like a swing capability. Where he kind of just drags it on the ground in a way. It's, he's much like the other enemies though. When it comes to the two swings. He'll drop it down on the ground. And then he'll have another one where he kind of swings it above his head. And then has that little bit of delay. But we'll also get an anvil hammer over here. It's pretty good for strength builds in my opinion. It looks like it's got a lot of damage, but I haven't tried it out myself. Might be trying it out a little bit uh, later into the gameplay, though, just to have a good bit of fun. But we will have another Umbral Rift at the top of this. You want to pop that open just to get that shrimp cocktail. A little bit of that currency. And then over to our right, we've got another one of those secrets within the Umbral. And this one's going to be pretty dangerous over here. 
there's going to be two of uh, those moths that come out and there is going to be a ton of the husks that come out. This is a really dangerous area over here and this is why I was so frustrated with those enemies actually coming out of that cave every time that I spawned in because this became a bit of a problem for me. But I figured best way to get this done literally after too many times running this was to use the throwables on the two ranged targets that were there initially take out one of the eggs that spawns in a husk then you've got to get lucky what you've got to get lucky with is if two of these moths spawn right next to each other because if you run up and you do a heavy strike you can just knock them straight over the edge and they're done we're done with it oh god but then you'll start to notice how many of these uh husks can come in i mean there's five right off the bat, and then there's going to be more that are dropping in. A couple of them spawn in through the eggs. Then, thankfully, we'll be able to pop that over there, and we'll actually be getting a little bit of that crafting material to upgrade our health potion. So it is beneficial to come out here. I did end up getting a, a vestige seed over here as well. So it, it was worth it, but it is still a really irritating spot to fight. And it, it is definitely one of those where I'm like, man, this would have been so much easier if I had one other person with me. There's so many different moments where I think to myself, some of this game, it's almost like they sat there and said, well, a solo you know, veteran player is going to have the experience of it being a lot harder for themselves and giving them a challenge. And then if you had two players, it, it, it may seem balanced. I don't know. I don't even know if it might even be balanced in that moment, especially if you had some, you're just dragging some casual is dead weight through with you. Who no, I don't know. Maybe it might be worse. Who knows? But I'm still having a good time with it, but it can be extremely frustrating at certain times. But thankfully, heading back, you'll actually notice that I ran back up to this location over here and I actually just wanted to die over here with some of the uh, vigor that I had gained down there. That way I didn't lose it or had to go down there and fight some of them. That would have been frustrating. But now I'm actually going to head over and actually pop the uh, stomach that was on this wall over here. Probably should have told you guys to get this done beforehand. But it's not too hard to grab it up. and You don't have to kill the guy up on top of the hill either. He doesn't actually get aggroed on you. But we'll get another, I believe that was another Umbral Eye. No, no, it's not an Umbral It's the dimin Diminishing Missile, which is another spell that you can cast. Now, moving forward from that section, we'll have a couple of these uh, smaller warriors to deal with down here. But then we'll also have another one of those holy healing knights down here. Thankfully, he's not as troublesome in this scenario, but we are in a little bit of a closed-in environment. And with him having that capability of making his like, light clones and they still deal a lot of damage, it can be irritating to fight off with him. But thankfully, he he's still... He's a little bit squishier now that I leveled myself. Then over here on the right, we got a little bit of that consumable to help us with having some holy resistance. And then just down here, if you run up, for whatever reason, they don't really want to pass the stairs in front of you, like the very bottom of the stairs. This is one of those points where you can run past and everything that's behind you, any of those enemies that might have been chasing you, as soon as you pass these stairs, they actually won't chase after you pass that point. So if you want to just keep running to this point and just pass everything that was just behind us, even the ones in that cave, this is the point where you can get to where they'll just lose aggro, thankfully. But outside here, you'll notice yet again, like I was saying before, that archer becomes a bit of a, a regular enemy type and will have more than a few of those dogs accompanying her. Thankfully, she is much easier to fight in this scenario than she was when she was a boss. A lot less health on there. But I would highly suggest not using the voodoo uh, shrunken head doll over here as there's a couple of things we need to grab up from inside Umbral over here. But at the same time, you do want to take out these archers over here. Now, over here next to the tree, we do have another one of those dogs to face off with. But we will also be getting a new piece of parchment, an enhanced one that has much more holy damage to it. Explosive holy damage. And then just below that, we've got another one of those angler loots. So keep that in mind. Inside of this location, there can be a rogue piece of loot that can get you killed. But just next to it right there, we will have another 
I suppose, catalyst, something that, uh, you know, empowers you for using spells. This one may be better for some of those Inferno, or no, that one may be better for Umbral players. Now, just behind us, there was actually a door in the Umbral, but we won't be able to pass through it just yet. We'll need to walk in the path or footsteps of the doomed paladin in order to get that done, so it's another one of those moments where we got to progress through the story in order to make sure that that opens later on. You'll notice it right here over on our left, and you definitely don't want to be an umbral by the time you uh, make it down to those two nights. You want to make sure that you stay out of umbral through this whole scenario. And the point that I'm showcasing here is you want to walk in, you want to use the throwable to take down the archer and then take down all of the dogs. Thankfully enough, we're able to get this done pretty smoothly and we've got that voodoo shrunken head doll over there to bring us out of umbral and then back into and ugh, axiom. But you'll notice the door right there that we won't be able to get into just yet. I'll be doing a video on that later on once I finally get it opened and accessed it through gaining the uh, footsteps of the Dune Paladin later on. But that should be pretty interesting for a video later on to get that tied in together. I do really like that they're using some of the previous areas in order to gain access to new ones and... The whole aspect of not really giving you a straightforward path as to where to go does feel kind of nice. You know, sometimes the, the hand holding, you know, the hand holding can be nice at times. And then other times it is really nice to just be able to actually figure out that, OK, I need to go this way. You know, there's nothing that's showing you the direction, but you figuring it out yourself can be almost as rewarding. And at the same time, it can be beneficial for some of us content creators to make guides like this. But we'll have two different knights to deal with down here, and you definitely don't want to go into Umbral down here as there's going to be one of those Reapers to deal with, and if you've got that Reaper to deal with on top of these two knights, that's a, that's a real troublesome fight that I, I would guarantee. Ooh, here's the best one. Best throwable I've seen so far. The Enhanced Lump Hammer. My God, this thing does so much damage. I mean, I'd be ripping people with this thing. I love this. I've been chewing through ammo pouches, just using this all day long. It makes my life so simple in certain moments. This thing can do 800 damage at certain times because of the strength benefit from it. Beautiful. Oh, God, it's beautiful. But it does cost three every time you throw it, so it is. It's a bit expensive, but it's worth it. But moving up from that section, we're actually going to be tying up with the end where we meet back with Skyrest Bridge. Now, sadly enough, this is going to end on a little bit of a lower note. We'll get some ammunition satchels over here, and we've got some archers down here over. Or then, we're basically just it, what, what seems like waiting for something, but there's really nothing. But we'll kind of sneak over here. Kind of, they, they don't notice at all. I'm just trying to make sure that I get this done as easily as possible, because I don't want to have to possibly run all the way back through everything yet again but i took down the two knights so you could just run past them could grab the item and then just run onto the ladder and get over here if you really wanted to but we'll pop that little protection amoeba thing take out the archers i mean look hold on we've got one of those healing holy knights down here and i'm going to use a throwable on him yeah this hammer oh buddy wait am i using the hammer Am I using something else? There's, this might be the enhanced. No, no, that looks like the hammer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Devastating. Devastating. Oh, God, it's so good. I love that thing. I love throwing that hammer. But we'll be heading up this circular uh, tower right here. And then this is the very end. This is the end of the Pilgrim's Purge Guide right here, guys. Sadly enough, this is where we ended up. We're literally right above where that chest was at the uh, end of my video for where we met up with the Skyrest Bridge after the boss fight. And there's just the chest down below us. We just get a regular mace and shield out of this. A little bit disappointing in my opinion. You know, you walk over here, you push the ladder down, and this will connect us with the other tower that we... Could have climbed up right after the boss fight with Pieta. And there's a little chest there. If you didn't grab it before, I mean, you know, maybe this is something new for you. You know, it's a nice little happy ending for you. But I've, I'd already 
gone up to this location, gotten the chest. I feel like that chest should have been all the way at the top, honestly, but it had a spell for holy healing. It was applying on the ground, healing and relieving status ailments to allies that walked upon it. It's not a bad spell, but at the same time, if you've already gotten it, it did kind of just make that whole pathway that we just took a little bit less entertaining, especially since we couldn't get through that one door that had the, uh, you know, needed the footsteps for the doomed paladin. But guys, that's going to be the end for the Pilgrim's Perch Guide. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully this has helped you out. Again, if anybody knows about that one locked door at the very beginning of the video, let me know down in the comments below. Still wondering whether or not that might be something connected like with that Dune Paladin footsteps door. Who knows? These could be different pathways that could be connecting in that manner. And then later on, I'll just have to do some videos on those certain sections. Tomorrow I'll be doing with the Finn guide, and I possibly will have the Frost Zone guide up on top of here as well. Uh, the Tower of Penitence, I believe. I can't remember the name of some of these locations, but... We've got a plethora of guides coming forward. We're going to be doing as much 100% as we can, going through some of the side quests, finding all the loot in all these areas, giving you as many of these tips and tricks for some of these boss fights and going forward, just being as helpful as we can for a lot of those Souls players coming through. But Lords of the Fallen's been a good time. Hopefully you're enjoying it yourself. You know, Let me know, let me know down in the comments below uh, what your experience has been as well and if you've enjoyed some of this content hit that subscribe button if you want to see some of this content live hit that link down in the description below follow me over to twitch we'll be streaming pretty much daily on lords of the fallen and on that note i'll see you in the next one and have a good one